Hi, I'm Raj. We're doing a, a new breakdown of app scale for our newest hire. Today we're looking at app scale deployment for a, a seven node configuration. At the very top level, we have load balancer. In the middle here, we're going to have application servers or web servers. At the very bottom, we have database servers. And so any traffic that comes in will first to the load balancer. They will get spread out across different application servers. And if they need database access, they're going to run into one of these different database nodes that connect to get access to that. So at the very top level, what we have is Nginx. Nginx is going to have different ports going to different applications. So port for your first app, you're going to have port 8080. That's going to come through. Nginx is going to route to one of these apps. Each of these app servers here, these are actually individual virtual machines. So these different virtual machines have two, two types of software running on them, and that's Nginx and HAProxy. And so these are so Nginx and HAProxy will actually load balance across different processes. So if you have your application, uh, let's say you wrote an application like Guestbook, there's going to be, let's say, three instances of Guestbook running here. It's kind of like three threads, but there's three processes. And so Nginx here will actually, so there's a reason that we have two different technologies here. Nginx does SSL, and also will do uh, static file servers. Okay, so if you're going to like, you have an index.html file that's static, Nginx will serve that up without having to hit any app servers. Balancer is not going to do this. If there is a dynamic request, Nginx will then pass it on to HAProxy. HAProxy will then pick one of the, the application servers that are available and then request it for its information or, or for the actual content that you're going to get. Does that make sense? So HAProxy will just choose, you said one of the three, it will choose one of the three and that's okay. Right. Okay. Exactly. And so Nginx, when you come to the top one, is randomly going to pick one of these three. And then when it goes into that node, it's going to go to another Nginx server that's going local on that machine. That's going to pass to HAProxy. HAProxy does health checks. So it's just going to go make sure if you set it up every, I think you configured it for five seconds or something like that. And periodically, it's just going to keep checking. Are you up? Are you up? Are you up? If it's up and it's available, it's going to go and send it a request. Right? And so that's why we have two different, two different things here, because Nginx doesn't do health checks. Is there anything else that we use HA proxy for besides health checks? Yeah, so we have the fact that if, uh, if an app server for whatever reason dies, HA proxy is still going to know that I can go to these other servers. Whereas Nginx would probably just keep routing. Right. So <coughs> then what we have is let's say your request is just going to do a database access. We're going to have, we also have Nginx. And HA proxy here too. On each of these stacks. Because we have different, um, so we have our interface code is Python. And so if you want to leverage more than one core, we can have multiple processes. So it's like you're having multiple threads for each of the other processes. And so any request that comes in here from an application server, we call it the PD server or data store server. That's going to get the request, same sort of thing, it's going to do health checks and, and, uh, and go through Nginx. And so if you do like a get, it's going to request some key. It's going to come through here. You're going to have multiple processes running here. These will interface with whatever underscoring technology you're using, like Cassandra. As we call Cassie affectionately. Uh, then Cassandra, when the recovery is going to go and do whatever it needs to do to get the data to wherever it is. And so that's a pretty much a basic three tier architecture load balancer, web servers, database. Okay. What about um, all the other APIs? Okay, so let's talk about the other APIs here. So this is a very, uh, this is the data store API. Some of the other APIs are include. Python DB, we have Memcache. So 
So memcache, uh, we, we put memcache D on every node that one of your applications are running. So we'll sit, it's going to have a process here running memcache. This one's going to have one also. And this one's going to have one also. Okay, so whatever. Yeah. Distributed? Distributed, right. So if you, if you modify it here, it's going to be reflected in those nodes also. So uh, that's memcache. We have blob store. So block store, what we do is, when you access the API, it's going to actually cut up the file that you're trying to store into one megabyte chunks, and also store it into the database. So under the covers, while it, it looks like a, a big blob digger dealer, right? Under the covers, we're just pulling mapping it to the data store. So it's also getting distributed, and if we're doing mechanisms to back up the database, we're also backing up block store as well. Uh, other API that we have here, uh, and a key thing about block store is, for when you're uploading a file or to create a upload link that the app server gives back to the user, when they upload the file, that link is used. So each of these guys also are in the uh, upload or the blob store server. And that's what the end of the card is putting into the sample. Uh, but when you actually go and try to download the, the blob, it just goes right to the application server and the application server makes all the things together from the, the database. Where is that key stored? Where is the key stored? Uh, so you'll have blob info objects. So it's kind of like uh, you do a query on, on blob info objects. And then you have the keys for each blob. And, you'll, and your app will do whatever meta information that you need to do to, to show it to your application. Other APIs, channel APIs. So the channel API, uh, what we do is each application server serves up some JavaScript to the, the user over here. That JavaScript will actually connect to, on the head node, we have uh, a programming process called eJavaD. This JavaScript will actually connect to that. And so when an application, when someone access so another user over here accesses the app, and this application server wants to send in a message to another client over here. This app server will then connect to eJavaD. eJavaD will then send the message over here. So it's kind of like a, a message messaging that you can do uh, client side. So that's the purpose of the channel API. It's so the message. Message users. users, right? So what normally happens is, and we use uh, the, the JavaScript here. You So what Stroke.js does is does boss connections, long-lasting connections to uh, move into next. There's going to be a, there's a, a module that we use for move next that it connects to, and then we communicate via eJavaD. And so this is just kind of uh, instead of your app always polling, do I have a message? Do I have a message? Do I have a message? This, this uh, channel API JavaScript library is actually just have a long lasting connection where it'll just sit there and connect, and then when it's ready, you'll get a message back. So, is that the only reason we have eJavaD? So, eJavaD we also use. Um, we no, use we also use for the XMPP. XMPP message. So XMPP we have, so uh, if you want to do messaging between different nodes, like if you're using Gchat, uh, Google Talk, you would use that, that uh, protocol. So it just makes like, you can do like a, a web chat um, for the app. And so for that, what's the underlying technology that we use for? Yeah. 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 Uh, other APIs that we have, Fuse. Fuse API. So since it's not, this is not running on Google App Engine, you can't use Google accounts. 
right? So we have our own actual number. Okay, so if there's if there are said node here, we'll have a So any, any users that come here, they'll go log in. That cookie gets placed on there. Cookie gets placed on their, their browser whenever they log in. Now we know their account information shows up in the user there. All right. What about uh, tasking? The task queue, you can use RabbitMQ. So RabbitMQ will run on, it will run on all nodes. Run on all application servers. All application servers. Yeah, all application servers. So and there's actually a. Uh, Blog that will run on Alice right here. That's also in the, the analytics page that we have. It's going to break down how, how these driver queue talk to each other. There's a lot of errors going on here. Is it just a queue? It's a queue that you, so if you want to do background processing, so if you're a user, you specify a path that uh, your application server can run. You can queue it. What driver queue will do is Give the application server, oh, you have a message, run this. It's a, a separate thread inside the app server itself. That thread will then go and post, post to the head node. Nginx will then route it to one of the app servers that actually execute that task. If, a, if it comes back with a 200, then the task is complete. If not, then RabbitMQ will then re enqueue it, or the app server will re enqueue it. And Perhaps another app server will then get that message and do that same thing and send it to itself. So is it a distributed queue or yeah. each of the distributed queue? Yeah. So, and it'll keep retrying to a certain number of, of retries. You can also, you can give it a name, so you say this, this task is called X, and you can queue it. And if you queue that same task called X, Is there any sort of um, scheduler for for doing it? No. So one of the things that you can do is deferring a task. We don't have that in here today, uh, just because we don't have this mechanism for timeouts for timers to actually just clone it and then fire it off. Uh, right now, if you queue a task, it's going to get run right away. Okay. Other APIs. We can plug in one. These are the main ones. These are the ones that we we have implemented. Some other ones like back ends we don't support because we're already running on VMs. So if you did want to run any arbitrary code, you can do that in here to get access to VMs. Um, and so getting this, we have for Python, we're also running against 